So the security section, um, this section's got various security packages in it. Um, going to install one or two, possibly three packages directly from this section, but there will be other packages being pulled in that are necessary to get those packages working. And indeed, as we go through the rest of the BLFS book, there could be one or two other uh, packages that we come back to this section to install. I used to go through this section and just install one after the other, more or less. Um, I've decided not to do that this time because I realise it's probably not absolutely necessary. Um, so, look, so what I will be doing, is, it, I'll just be going through it. Um, it does give it a bit of information there about what's in this section. Um, and there's a list of all the packages. So what we'll do is start with vulnerabilities and then go on to make CA, which is the one that I want to install next. Um, that one there. Because uh, that will install certificates on the system which will enable links and wget and possibly other packages further down the line to um, validate uh, connections or maybe other st uh, things that need validating against um, known certificates. So let's move on to vulnerabilities. Yes, yes. Um, it's just a bit there about what vulnerabilities there are in the system and how they can be mitigated uh, through various ways. Um, as it says there, the LFS team have got um, a security advisories uh, link now, which I don't think they really had before. I think they did use to advise of uh, security advisories, but it seems to be a bit more professional the way they do it now with the links from the main web page. So, and then there's other places you can go to read about security, all these other links in green as well. So let's move on to building make CA. Now, um, one thing I forgot to do before I started links, when you download files from links, it downloads and by default into the directory where you started links from, you can type in the location before the file name that you download, but that means I've got to type in the location every time um, download something. So the best thing to do here is I'm going to press backspace to get the history of the links up, like the URL links. Uh, I'm going to highlight the current one, which is make CA, so it gets copied to the mouse clipboard. I'm going to quit links. I'm going to change into sources BLFS, where the files are, and I'm going to restart links from here, but provide it with the make CA URL instead of the security one. So there we are back there. So let's have a look at make CA. There's a link there to download the file. And we've got some dependencies which are needed. One's required at build time. Oh, actually, it says required at runtime to generate certificates. Okay, well, we will be running make CA to obviously generate these certificates, which is what it's for. So we will actually build that before we build make CA, it seems sensible to do that. Um, optional to generate a shared NSS database, so I'll probably install that as well. In fact, what might be best to find out the dependencies, because this will get complicated just looking at this text browser, I'm going to bring back my browser on the system. So as I said previously, this could be on your phone or maybe another uh, device that you've got. Uh, to aid aid building, otherwise you would have to do it all within the term if you've got absolutely no other device or if you haven't, say, printed out the necessary bits of the manual. You'll need to hold the manual if you've got enough paper. Um, probably quite a waste, but that would be another option if you've got no other options to um, get access to the instructions while you're building on the terminal. Um, yeah, what I'm going to do here is go to the contents. I'm going to load up the make CA tab, I'll just move this to the right 
So basically everything, everything to the right has got priority to build and then I work my way back to the left. I can just close down the tabs and then it just works back this way. So make CA, we've got a requirement for P11 kit, but it's a runtime. But as soon as we've installed, it's only a tiny package. It'll take a, you know, a few seconds to install. Um, so I will install this beforehand. Likewise with NSS. P11 kit's got recommended dependency of libtazen and also make CA for when P11 kit runs. Well, because we've installed P11 kit for make CA, it will only be run when we make uh, when we run make CA. So that's okay. That that dependency. Um, and then we've got optional NSS. We've already got NSS earmarked to be built for make CA so that's good that that's already there we'll do that as a priority so that this dependency gets fulfilled uh, immediately as this is a dependency of make CA if, if that makes sense so make CA is like the grandfather p11 kit is the father and then NSS is the son as far as p11 kit is concerned but it's the son as far as make CA kit is concerned because there's a direct dependency there so if that makes sense, it will make it makes sense to install NSS before anything else that's here. So let's look at libtazen now to see what dependencies that's got. That's got GTK doc, that would be for documentation and Valgrind for extensive or uh, more extensive testing. Um, now I did do this when I did BLFS 9.1 but I was installing a lot more and I think as I seem to remember Valgrind had quite a few dependencies to get it to work so I won't be installing that this time around if you do want to do uh, that extended testing then um, you're welcome to do that but be warned I think it does it's quite intensive um, and I believe you will get failures anyway if you do install that and run it so it's, it's only necessary if you really feel you want to do that so as far as that's concerned, there's no dependencies for libtazen. Let's go to NSS. That needs something called NSPR and it's got SQLite or SQLite. I'm not sure how that's pronounced properly um, as a recommendation. So that might be a good idea as that's a light, lightweight database to install that. And P11 kit, which is just a runtime anyway. Again, this will only be run when make CA is run initially. Um, eventually there might be other packages that use this, but at the moment that's okay, that, that dependency. So let's look at NSPR, that's got no dependency, no dependencies, so let's go to SQLite. That's got one libedit, I don't know if you can see that libedit, it's in a bolder type than unzip, that means it's actually off the BLFS book so there's no instructions in the BLFS book and if you can see the um, link down the bottom that appears down the bottom here when I hover over it you can see it's not going to the Linux from scratch website it's going to the home page for that package so I don't tend to install those uh, because there aren't any instructions my fear is that I'll do something which causes some problems elsewhere so by sticking with the instructions within the BLFS book, I reduce that risk quite a lot. Um, I would install it if there was some functionality that was really important to me. Uh, so it's not, a, you know, th something that you mustn't do. It's just something the way I do it. Um, I'd certainly say if you're new to BLFS, I would stick to that rule as well. Um, it's my bit of advice, just so that you know that you you are building BLFS that's been it's been tested. Um, so if there are any problems, you've, you've got more of an appreciation that it may be something you've missed or, or done in, incorrectly, for example. Um, whereas if you install something outside of the book, then you wouldn't know whether you've built that correctly or if it's something else you've done. Um, unzip, that, that will be useful. Several other packages use that. Um, I think Lynx uses it. So I will install that now while I'm here. I don't think it's got any particular dependencies it is only required here to unzip the documentation but as I say it will be re required at another time um, probably pretty soon actually because I've, as I say, I've got links and wget I'm not sure if wget uses it but links certainly does 
and it's handy to have them around. There are other packages that will be installed in that are zipped up rather than tarred up, so um, yeah, it's definitely a good idea. So that's got no dependencies, so it looks like this is a good order. You can see why they use the tabs to get the dependencies up, and I can't do that in links, so this is why I've done it in the browser. It, it now means that to get a successful build of Make CA with the added functionality I've selected and with all the mandatory dependencies, um, this, this is the order. This should fulfill the ordering of those dependencies. And as I go through, I'll just double check that anyway to make sure uh, that none of these are out of order. So basically, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six packages to build. Uh, and then I can build make CA. So what I'm going to do is start with uh, unzip. So I'm going to drill down to this link by following these links here. I can't remember which one it was. Let's try this one first. Right, was it Liptazen? Uh, no, it wasn't that one, so let's go back. Uh, it might have been NSS. Oh, to what? Let me follow it correctly. I'll do the. Oh, yeah, it wasn't NSS, wasn't it? That one there. NSPR was next, that's right. And then, no, it was an SPR, it must have been SQLite. Yep, there it is. Okay, so I'm going to go to unzip. And there we are, we're, we're to the unzip um, page now. So let's look down here. Um, it says, uh, if I show you on the web page, it might be easier to read. There's some, the previous version of Unzip package has some locale related issues. Currently, the NoBLFS editor is capable of testing these locale issues. Therefore, the locale related information is left on this page, but has not been tested. A more general discussion of these problems can be found in Program Assumes Encoding section of the locale related issues page. So um, if you do find a problem with uh, unzipping stuff, then that would be worth uh, reading, I would have thought. So it looks like we've got the package and a patch to download here. So let's grab hold of those. So D to download. Yes, again. So it says there's an error there, and so yes, just continue that. Uh, we've got a cookie. Oh, is this because it's downloading from SourceForge? Hopefully this is not going to be a problem now. Uh, so let's do yes there to remember that cookie. Save to disk. Right, yeah, it looks like it's trying to switch mirrors. Yeah, SourceForge uses mirrors, so it looks like... Um, links hasn't coped well with that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the file name from the URL it just happens to be up here and I'm going to delete the file name that it's tried to gather I'm going to paste that in with a center click save that left arrow to go back and now I'm going to download the patch. Now you can't press enter here because what happens if you press enter is you'll just get the text this, um, output of the patch because it's not a binary. It thinks you might want to display it in the, in the browser. So what you have to do is press D to download. And you'll get the normal um, download menu. And you can see you can actually view it from there, which is what would have happened, uh, what happened previously when I just press enter. But I don't want to do that. I want to just press enter there save the patch I'll press the left arrow to go back and now what I need to do is go back to the 
um, BLFS sources. Just take a look at that. Um, yeah, there it is there. There's the patch and there's the tar file. Now it does look like it's downloaded correctly because there's a couple of hundred, nearly 300 kilobytes. Um, I was worried it might just download the web page, the HTML or something, in which case it would be tiny. It would be, you know, maybe 10K or something. So it does look like it's worked. So let's go back to the instructions and see what it says. Uh, so there's more notes here. Use of the unzip in JDK Mozilla Docbook or any other BLFS package installation is not a problem as BLFS instructions never use unzip to extract a file with non ASCII characters in the file name, so that's good. The issues are thought to be fixed in this patch, but since none of the editors have the data to test this, the following workarounds are retained in case they might still be needed. The unzip package assumes that file names stored in zip archives created on non Unix systems were encoded in CP850 and that they should be converted to ISO 855. 88591 when writing files into the file system. Such assumptions are not always valid. In fact, inside the zip archive, file names are encoded in the DOS code page that is in use in the relevant country, and the file names on disk should be in the locale encoding. In MS Windows, the OEM to char C function from user 32 DLL does the correct conversion, which is indeed the conversion from CP850 to a superset of ISO 88591. If MS Windows is set up to use a US language, US English language, there is no equivalent in Linux. So that's what the problem is basically. Um, and it says when using unzip to unpack a zip archive containing non ASCII file names, the file names are damaged because unzip uses improper conversion when any of its encoding assumptions are incorrect. For example, in the RU, RU KOI 8 R locale, conversions of file names from CP. So copage 866 to KOI 8-R is required, but the conversion from 850 to ISO 88591 is done, which produces file names consistent of undecipherable characters instead of words. The closest equivalent understandable example for English users, English only users is ROT13. There are several right ways around this limitation. So it gives you examples there if that's important, I'm not going to read through anymore. Um, so let's unzip this package then. So tar minus xvf, usual for, as for um, all these packages, unzip dot, oh, unzip 60, dot tar dot gz. Okay, so it does look like it hasn't downloaded the GZ. It's probably downloaded maybe maybe a bit of code or maybe the web page is really that big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use wget to fetch this file. Um, I'll delete the existing one. I'll use the cut and paste to make sure I delete the right file. And I'll use wget and fetch the... I have to go back up to get the URL. And of course, got to add in this um, uh, switch here, this option to tell it not to check for the certificates. Okay, and it looks like, yeah, it's now 1.3 meg, it's downloaded. So it looks like wget can cope with the uh, redirection that SourceForge does, which is good. It's also something I've got to bear in mind if I download any future packages from SourceForge. Um, so they may, well, they, looks like they probably will fail. Okay, so yeah, there's our new unzip 60 tar.gz. Um, file and as you can see it is a lot bigger now so this should successfully extract this time and indeed it does that's lucky so CD into unzip uh, 60 switch back to the instructions go to the next page and the first thing we've got to do is to run this patch in 
since click to paste that in that's worked fine and then we've got the instructions which is just to make let's see if there's any other options a prop to build this probably isn't no there isn't it's just an explanation about this make command to compile it so we'll paste that in and this should be quite a quick package to install it's uh, not, not particularly big okay that's done move on to the next page now as a root user we'll install it And of course, I'm not the root, so I need to become the root. And paste that command in again. And that's it. Control D to come out. Control D again. And let's just switch back to make sure that's the last command we need to type in. Yes, it is. So I can sign that one off as completed so let's go back clean up and I'll go firstly to my browser to get rid of the tab there uh, and also see that it's in chapter 12 system utilities so I can mark that off my list cross that off I'll get rid of that tab and see that we need to go to SQ light next. So now I'll go back to my terminal five, my fifth virtual terminal. I'll press the left arrow, which should take me back to where I came from, which was SQ light. That's good. And now I can download uh, the tarballs for this. There's two. There's one for the actual package. So let's do the first one. Save that go back and the second one's documentation always find documentation is really useful to have around if you're trying to do something with the terminal maybe you haven't got internet access for some reason you can browse the documentation and maybe find what you're looking for in the documentation so again D for download yes I'll continue I'm able to get the local issue for some reason Okay, that was actually bigger, the documentation was bigger than the tarball itself. Save to disk and press the left arrow to go back. So now I'm going to switch back to the first terminal, check that's there, yep, and extract it. So the tarball for the source code is the one that says autoconf in it, the other one is the documentation, I'm docking in, in the file name. So extract that, change directory into it, and then I can switch to my virtual terminal 5 and start reading the instructions. So it looks like the first thing to do is, uh, the reason why we built unzip at the moment, we didn't need to do it at the moment, we would have had to have done at some point, but here is the command unzip being used to extract the documentation. And obviously if you don't want the documentation, then you don't need to do this part. So let's paste that in. That does it quietly. There's no errors, so we can assume it's worked. Now we've got a big configure command. Let's just page forward. I'll press the space bar. See what it says about the options. So there's a disabled static. Most of these have got disabled static disable static because um, static libraries aren't installed with Linux from scratch enable FTS5 and some CPP flags which are set and that's it really so they're just the standard explanations for what's already there there's nothing additional that we can add in so I'm going to copy this part of the configure command paste that in switch back press page to get to the uh, space to get to the next page and I'm just going to copy this, including this make command. Switch back 
and paste that in. So what's going to happen here with that double ampersand, the configuration will run, which is what it's doing at the moment. And assuming that runs successfully, it'll automatically carry on and run the make command, which is what it's doing now. Yeah, now I seem to remember in the past um, when I've built SQLite, there's this one um, compile command, this one that's on the, at the bottom of the screen now, which seems to take an inordinate amount of time compared to what everything else it does. It does look like, I oh, maybe it's not that one, maybe it's another one, it does look like it's stuck, um, especially if you're on a slow machine, but it is actually doing something. Okay, so that's compiled successfully. Let's switch back to the instructions to see what to do next. So as the root user, we run make install. So become the root, run the make install command, and that's done. And then it says also, if you've downloaded the optional documentation, it's the issue of following commands as a root user to install it. So there's this install command here and the copy command. And that's complete. So Let's just double check, there's no more commands. Yep, that's installed. So I'm going to return to the unprivileged user, go back to the sources and remove the SQLite autoconf source directory to tidy up. And now I'm going to go to the browser to get rid of SQLite. Let's finish with. So the next one we need to go to is NSPR. So switch back to the browser, the links browser. Press the left arrow to go back to the previous package and we're going to NSPR next. So we've done the two dependencies that are recommended for, if you can see up here we're on the NSS page. We're now going to install the required dependency, so you can't ignore this one, you have to install this one in SPR, so we'll press enter there. This one I don't think has got any dependencies, let's just double check, no, go straight into the installation. So we'll download the tarball, go back to instructions, extract 
NSPR, CD into NSPR, and now we can start copying and pasting the commands to install it. So there's some explanations here. There's a with Mozilla parameter which is already there. With P threads was already there, and then it explains about something there which looks like it's testing for 64 bit, which is this bit here. So there's no extra options or commands here that we can add into the configure that might be useful. So let's just copy all of this and paste this in. So once again, we're running all the commands to um, configure and, and build the package and then we have to switch the root user to install it and that will be a, a common pattern. And I don't think this takes too long, I think this is quite a small package again. Okay, that's installed, so we need to become the root, so I may as well do it now. Switch to the fifth virtual terminal. Um, oh yes, I forgot about this. Um, testing. Um, they don't actually show the test commands as a separate command. It's normally embedded um, within some text. Um, I've just seen this here. But for this package, it does say it's not particularly useful. Now, uh, I didn't actually notice if there was any testing for SQLite, um, which I should have done, really, if there was. Um, so what I'll do is I'll install this and just double-check that. So that's installed. Let's go back. So there's no more commands. There's no configuration. So I'm going to go back. I'm just going to quickly go to back to SQLite. Just see if there was any options to test. Right, it doesn't come with a test suite. Okay, so I haven't missed it. So that's okay. Um, right, so now let's come out of this. It's actually the part of the installation took us into another subdirectory so we need to go back up to two levels back to BLFS and I can remove an SPR source directory and I'll remove that from this R oh, now I'm, this is one thing I am good at forgetting to do is to mark it off my list so I need to mark off an SPR which is in chapter 9 in SPR and I forgot to do SQLite so let's get rid of that one and load up SQLite again and see that's in chapter 22 okay that one again. 